found out from his wife who messaged me when I was out doing a side job. They were going to meet up that day. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post. You guys read the title? Let's get into it. So, surviving infidelity. Found out my wife of 10 years has been having an affair. Wow. It sucks, man. Hey, it's such a tough pill to swallow. I found out my wife has been having an affair with her ex-boss for the past year. I'm 35, my wife is 36, and her boss is in his late 50s. I found out from his wife who messaged me when I was out doing a side job. They were going to meet up that day. We have two kids as well. I really do love my wife. She is my best friend. Her and I have such a deep connection that is all so hard to deal with. She has now cut off all communication with him, blocking numbers, etc. Don't believe it. Don't fall for that. They never do. When I was asking her about the intimacy, she said it started about six months ago and was happening once about every three weeks. I'm so lost. I'm crushed. Broken hearted. I took the rest of the week off work. Mm. I need to find someone to talk to right away. I just don't know what to do. I spent the other night in a hotel room and now in our house, sleeping in separate beds and trying to coexist with each other for our kids. I've been asking her all the questions that come to my head. This is all over the place. I'm scared to be without her. Oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't ever feel that. Don't ever feel that way, man. For any, don't be like that, guys. Don't be like that. I'm scared to be without her. I know I will not know what to do right now, and I need to keep pushing through. I'm glad you know that. I'm glad you know that. She has a very special place in my heart. If you were to ask any of our friends about our, about our relationship, they would say that those are goals they would like to have with their own. I felt so deeply connected with her for so long. Most people's first instinct is divorce and separation. But it wasn't mine. I don't know. Maybe I sound dumb that I didn't think that. Any advice will be great. Wow, let me give my thoughts on this. I personally completely understand how that could not be your first thought. Now, would in my for me, would it be my first thought? Yes. It's over. It's over. The sad thing is you're saying you have nobody to talk to about this, man, not even like coworkers, you know, a cousin, a brother. And I'm going to say it. She basically showed you that you loved her more than she loved you. She had no love for you. She didn't care about you to go and cheat that all the feelings you had for her. She held a special place in your heart. You, you put you put space in your life for her where she just didn't care. She just wanted to reap whatever benefits she was getting out of the marriage. And it's so unfortunate. And in that in, in these situations, guys, you have to know to leave, run as fast as you can. And I, I'm not going to act like it's easy, especially if you had kids. I know it's probably not easy, but you have to understand she will never get rid of him. She's she's not going to get rid of his number. If she does, it's temporary. It's a temporary move. And a month, let a month go by and she thinks that you forgave her. His number somehow gets unblocked. Somehow you start seeing text messages that she initiated. She makes up an excuse. Oh, I needed to go get something from him. Or I needed, I forgot my uh, scarf at his home in his car. Something, something just dumb. It'll never end. And if she can't have him, she's going to find somebody else. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, you're married to someone who does not want to be with you. You're married to someone who doesn't feel fulfilled by you. 
You don't want to hold on to that. You don't want to hold on to someone who looks at you and disgust. You don't. And when you think about it that way, guys, if you're in a situation and you think about it that way, it should help you move on. You don't want to stay with someone who's just disgusted by you. Why would you want to be with that person? Why? It's, it's not worth it, man. Absolutely. Get those kids DNA tests. Get those kids DNA test and get a divorce. Do not try to work anything out with her. Man, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. For anyone who could be possibly going through this same exact situation, let them know in the comments what they need to do. They need to move on. Let them know what they need to do. Guys, if this, if this is the first true story video you've heard on this channel, I'm going to go ahead and attach a flashback story. With that being said, I'll catch you guys at the next one. Hello, true and all you true believers. Once again, thank you for all the comments to our stories. My wife and I talked about our years of practice, and we both agreed that 80% of our stories are basically the same. We also wanted you to know that while we were well known and did mainly represent men, we also represented women a fair amount, even the ones who cheated. As we have stated before, this was a business, and we had staff and bills and taxes and all those things that come along with running your own business. By the very nature of practicing family law, at least in Texas, we couldn't always represent the faultless spouse. Sometimes, when those bills were due, we would represent the more at-fault spouse. We did try to represent the more at-fault spouse in a reasonable manner and encourage them to examine their position from a reasonable stance. Based on this, we thought we would share what we feel is a very typical cheating story from a practical standpoint as attorneys from the cheating spouse's perspective. There is nothing sexy here. The following scenario is one that was repeated in hundreds of cases that we handled, with the addition of a particular story we remember with similar circumstances. So, it is Tuesday. W would walk into our office and as an initial consult, fill out her paperwork and hand us the petition for divorce she had been served by her husband, H. It's a pretty typical petition, but it does include adultery, which can be pled as a fault ground in Texas. No kids, no real property, relatively short marriage, so no spousal maintenance. I would ask W about her affair, which she would admit. She would then say she wants the divorce too. I would take a minimal retainer as there was nothing really to fight over other than hurt feelings. From my experience, by this time, H has already tried to reconcile, done the pick me dance, and W is just done or has moved on with AP. From W's perspective, H was not satisfying her in one or more ways, and so she sought that satisfaction outside of the marriage. Frequently, W never explicitly told H that she was unsatisfied and would somehow just expect H to guess what was wrong and how he should change. Though W would usually not share this information until after the affair had begun and W got caught. And then sometimes, H would change in the ways requested by W, but W would continue to be checked out of the marriage. When H had finally had enough, the divorce was sought. This scenario is one that repeated itself over and over. These cases were typically solved by conferring in the hallway or at a mediation before a trial. The reason we share this is because of one particular case that stands out to us. This case was basically as described above and we get to the court and the court requires us to confer. We go to the conference rooms, have our inventories and property. What little there was is already split between the parties. It is basically a he takes what he has and she takes what she has type of deal. There are typically one or two items that have to be exchanged at a later date, but in this case, everything was already split. Understandably, H was visibly upset and he was refusing to sign the agreement for divorce. I had seen this before, so I was asking W to leave the conference room so I could talk with H and his lawyer. I distinctly remember this conversation. 
It went something like this. Me. Can I talk directly to your client? Opposing counsel. Sure. Me. I know you're upset, and you have every right to be. But what do you want? Betrayed husband. She cheated on me. Me. Okay, I know that sucks. And we concede the point. But that still doesn't answer my question. What do you want to happen here? Betrayed husband. It's not fair. Me. Is it vengeance you want? Betrayed husband. I don't know. Me. Well, all the property is split. There's nothing to fight over. You are getting rid of her, so I'm not sure what else there is. There's not a lightning bolt that will strike her. There's no judge that will put her in jail. I know it seems like she's getting off scot-free. And unfortunately, from a legal perspective, in this situation, there's nothing really to fight over. All you have left to do now is to live well. I know this sucks, but sometimes there is no getting even. There's just getting away. I don't know what part of that small speech caused a change in H's demeanor, but it was like this weird calm came over him. Without a word, H picked up the pen, signed the agreement, and walked out. As such, I went to W in the hallway, had her sign, and I took her in front of the judge to do what is called a prove up. This is the process in Texas that finalizes a divorce if there is no trial. Once that was done, W was asking me if H was around. I told her he left after he signed. I didn't think anything of it. W went on her way while I returned to the office to draft the final paperwork. A month or so later, the paperwork was done and surprisingly, signed almost immediately by H and his attorney. So I called up my client and had her come in. When she came in, she looked like she had aged about 10 years. She was a completely different person. I was asking her what was wrong and she broke down in my office. After a few minutes, I went to get her water and some tissue. She then explained to me that H wasn't talking to her at all. I just stared at her blankly. Then I'm asking her, isn't that what you wanted? You seemed so nonchalant during the divorce. You got to keep your stuff and move on with AP. She explained that AP was not who she thought he was and that she was trying to contact H, but he had basically disappeared since the day of court. She didn't know what to do. His entire family had also just shut her out. After about an hour of this, I finally got W to sign a final decree so I could get it entered as a final order. This time, she did not want to sign. I don't know why she was not willing to sign the decree. Technically, she was already divorced and it was already the order of the court. I guess it just didn't hit her till after he was gone. Lessons learned. So, lessons learned. Number one, sometimes there is no getting even. There's just getting away. Based on our experience, in a childless situation like this, Going no contact and living well is the best revenge. Only initiate contact through your attorney. Focus on yourself and your healing. Contact with a wayward spouse is pain shopping. Let your lawyer do it. Number two, don't do the pick me dance. If they have stepped out, then they have checked out. Pull that bandaid off. Number three, in Texas, a divorce without the necessity of a trial is final at the prove up and rendered at that time i.e. when you go in front of the judge with your lawyer, you will be considered divorced on that date. The final paperwork typically called a decree of divorce typically entered at a later date. Number four, it only takes one party to do a prove up, so long as all parties have signed off on the settlement agreement. Until next time, your friendly Texas neighborhood family lawyers, this is not legal advice. Wow, let me give my thoughts. Wow, guys, she thought the grass was greener on the other side. Mm, mm, mm. It's sad how a married woman can can have all these complaints about her husband. And they they walked in on their wife cheating or they caught their wives cheating. And she comes out and tells them, like, well, you don't do this for me anymore. You don't do that for me anymore. Um... I, I'm not sexually pleased by you anymore. You you weren't going to say anything. So you just fake it and you pretend that you're happy, but you secretly are going out to be with someone else. Again, I say, I say this all the time. They step out of the marriage to try to fix the issues happening in the marriage. You don't want to work with your husband. You're having issues with your husband. 
but you don't want to fix it with him. You want to just be sneaky and step out of the marriage. So what did you ultimately want to do? You want to have your cake and you want to eat it too. You want to be able to be married, whether it's because he's taking care of you. It's just some form of security, some way, somehow. But you want to go out and, and get it pleased by other men. You know, it's sad. And in this case, when the, the, the divorce was final, you were, you were all happy about it. Now that he's gone and he disappeared, he's not speaking to you. Oh, I need him. I, I lost him forever. Well, that's, that's, you made your bed. Now you have to lie in it. AP didn't really love you like you, like your husband did, did he? He didn't love you. No, he didn't. That, this woman was being selfish. She got what she deserved. I wish that man well. I hope, I hope he had he he had he moved on and was living the best life, living his best life, focusing on himself. And you are absolutely right. And I've said it before: the best revenge is moving on and becoming a better person.